sun, moon was out, just like clear daylight. So we hit the road. I was the lead point uh, behind the scouts that was out in front. <coughs> and uh, we hit the road about, a, about an hour, and it was customary, you know, the, you rotate to, so I was the lead platoon, we first break, we stopped, I fell aside, then when we moved on, they moved through, and I fell in on the end of my platoon. Well, we hadn't gone in just a few seconds. All hell broke loose. Everything lit up. Flares all over the place. Right out of that, 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 I mean, she got the one mortar shell started coming in on us. And then the flares would die down and they'd go back up. And the captain hollered. Uh, with, uh, uh, <coughs> it wasn't hardly anything. A ditch was all covered up with snow. There was just nowhere to, to take cover, you know. And so they, they pretty well shot, shot us up. But uh, the captain did order, said, fall back, told us. And so uh, I was on the rear end, so I fell way back. And well, probably uh, uh, five or six hundred yards. And there, <coughs> there was a bridge that went. We were going around the, the, the hillside slope. They had the road. Then there's a stream. Then there's a railroad track. Well, I drove back, and there's a little building there. I don't know what it was used for. Uh, I got ready right and set up the CP, my platoon, and I was waiting. And the people had come dwindling back down. You know, one or two or two, and got my machine gunners in place and a BAR man. Cause <coughs> there's a bridge. At Metal Bridge crossed over to a little railroad building on the other side. And so we had dropped back and the other men started filtering back. Well, in a little bit looked up and to the left, here come a whole group on the railroad, come down the railroad track up in front, like oh, four or five hundred yards, white, co white coats on. Here they come out, look like a company of men almost. Here they were coming down and it came down to where the bridge was, opposite where we were. I had my machine gun around the slope. They were behind me, and I got my BR men down there next to the road. And they were my machine guns could far over our head. So we got set up, and I figured that what was going to do, they were going to cross that bridge, cut us off. Well, they came down and they stopped and they stood there and talked and for probably five minutes and just and I didn't know what they was going to do, but finally they decided to cross the bridge and they came across the signal file. Well, we gave orders to let them get about a halfway or more before uh, uh, anyone uh, start far. And so we, they did, they came over and we cut loose on them. Well, uh, when daylight, when morning came and we thought everybody that was, uh, had, that was available or was capable of it, Moving can't, had came back, and so our captain said, "Well, we're, we're going to withdraw. We're going back to uh, uh, our uh, point of departure." That so, but lo and behold, somehow or other, on the other side, the Germans got behind and, and had cut us off on the road. So the captain put us had us move up on this hillside mountain with some trees for cover. So we, but anyway, we there was seven. We killed seven men. They was dead there on the, when we left there on the bridge, and some was wounded because we could see two or three got carried others back after while we were far and had been wounded. Anyway, we went on this hill. It's called division called it Hill Thirty. They that they that's the way they do. They give a number or something like that. So we. Got on the hill, started trying to dig in. <laughs> you couldn't hardly dig or nothing. You just got the snow off, but you couldn't hardly get the ground, break, break the ground. But anyway, of course, during that time, we didn't have nothing to eat. Didn't have anything. The only thing I had, chocolate bars. I was a person, I didn't smoke, but I loved chocolate. So I'd trade my cigarette package to other fellows for the chocolate bars. And I kept my combat jacket full, the two big pockets. Everybody would come to John for, for chocolate bar. And sometimes I'd give little kids, you know, go in town or anything. Sure. But uh, <laughs> that, that's all we had. We had nothing. We, oh, some, we had some little packages of flavoring. 
We couldn't have any fires there. They wouldn't let us have any fires or anything. Well, it was uh, four days before the 274 unit had, had gotten up to where they could relieve us. And, they, and, and when they got there, we, we had to carry we had to carry so many men off the hill, they couldn't, they couldn't walk. But they took it, uh, they brought up three trucks and loaded them up with men. And we went back about a mile to a, where the kitchen had been set up in an old sawmill. The, this was a wooden area and it a lot of timber work and uh, coming out of the mountains there. And, and in the old, uh, uh, place where they had hot food, they had pancakes and coffee. I, I didn't even eat any pancakes, but that coffee, oh my goodness, what it tastes like. It tastes better than Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but the next morning, after they canvassed everybody, the ones we lost was killed when they hit, and those that were pulled off the hill with frozen feet, out of the 158 men, we only had Thirty men and two officers left uh, out of that whole group. But you talk about being demoralized. Oh uh, yeah. You wouldn't believe. You know what they did? They moved us down that slope, across that creek up a hill to another mound, filled us in with another unit who had suffered too. After I've been up there four days, boy, I tell you, that was one of the hardest setbacks I ever faced. For him. How do you think you were, was it your constant movement that kept you that from freezing never, your yeah, feet? I was on patrol about, it. Captain and I had a good relationship. I caught most of the patrol duty. How, how this relationship started, uh, our captain was killed. Uh, originally, a jeep ran over mine, flipped it over and everything, and they shipped it about to England, but later he died. But so we got this lieutenant from 274th came over to take over the, the leadership, the cap, acting captain. Well, when he came over, uh, they called us all the platoon leaders. A runner came and said, the Captain wants to see you, the CO. So we went up this building, partly bombed out. And, didn't have a roof on or anything, but he had sent the CP, he had a radio man there and a runner and two or three others. And he said, he introduced himself, says, I'm Captain, I'm, I'm Lieutenant Donahue, and I'm going to be your, I'll be the acting commander. And uh, he asked each one of us some questions about ourselves. And uh, then I said, he was from New Jersey. And I said, you know, Captain, or Lieutenant, I said, I knew a, in Alaska. I knew a, a Donna who was from uh, uh, New York, and I said, "I said uh, you did." He said, he, "He said I had a brother that was a, in uh, Alaska." I said, "This fellow was in the 198th, 198th Coast Artillery, and he let me out a big wow. <laughs> that was my brother." I said, well, we used to call them a dollar ninety-eight outfit, <laughs> but anyway, from there on, he called me for extra duty all the time, and uh, that's uh, uh, most of the patrols I led. But I led three or four or five patrols at different times, out trying to see if, if find any movement on the part of the German, and uh, then two I'd circulate among them. But, among the men and everything. I just didn't stop. I just, uh, you know, I was so active. It's kind of, I don't know if ironic's the term I'm looking for, but it's, it's surprising and unique to hear that a combat patrol is what saved your life. Obviously, because you're moving, you're staying warm, you're constantly moving, whereas in jungle situations or maybe non-winter situations, it's safer to be back on the line in your foxhole opposed to being out in a combat patrol looking for engagement. But as you just said, because of your constant movement in these combat patrols... Yeah, I'd say partially that was true. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>